if you were walking and you saw two quarters or three quarters on the ground, if you're one of those that wouldn't bend down to pick it up, ship however you want. What's up, beautiful people? So I'm still working on the video where I actually made this move to my new office. I have three offices all connected. It's pretty sweet. It feels like a home away from home. I can really focus on the business here. Randy has an excellent place to do photos. She has two great windows here, which we're still waiting on blinds from the building manager. But overall, this has been a great move. I'm working on the video though to show you how it was like moving all this stuff. I mean, a bunch of these Husky racks, 4,500 items worth of inventory. It's been crazy. So in the meantime, I figure maybe I should just do like a little what sold video. I'm gonna put pop-ups so that you guys can kind of see some of the tags. I got some pretty awesome items that sold. Um, a couple, well, I got like one really expensive item and the rest are just kind of like, you know, low tier to mid tier. But yeah, it's been pretty great. I hope your guys' sales have been good. I know tax returns came in and uh, that kind of leads to a lot of sales, but I'm telling you, promoting the listings like I have been 10% across the board, it's high, but I've had a lot of sales, a lot of uh, multi-quantity sales and then a lot of like lower end items that maybe I priced a little too high or just weren't getting seen, like being buried in the eBay uh, pages, they're starting to come to the, you know, to the surface and people are buying them. So the first item we got to go out is actually a five item multi-quantity order. And a bunch of them are really old SKUs. And what this person ended up doing was they sent offers of like $1 on each item, which I have uh, $8.99 shipping. So that's only $10 an item, which that's not good at all. But I decided to counter with $5 on each one of those. And they ended up accepting on all of them, I believe. So the buyer is all in for $41.95. You know, five items, that's what, $8.00 you know, some change per item, but they're extremely old items. Some of them are just t-shirts and I don't know. The thing is if you buy an item and you're not sure what the value is of it, or maybe you made a mistake, maybe there's a couple flaws on it that you missed. It's good just to get some money back. Now I'll take any profit if it's profit, but when you have the multiplier with the shipping uh, discount, meaning I charge $8.99 for one item, $2.99 for each one, you can get deals like this and it actually works out. So we're gonna put this in a poly mailer unless it's cheaper with a flat rate. We're gonna find out. It looks like it's gonna be cheaper with a flat rate because they're far away. It looks like this shipment is going to New York. So a lot of the uh, Upper East Coast, Upper West Coast, because I'm in Texas, those are gonna be more expensive. The way you can get around paying a lot is using this one right here. This is the legal flat rate envelope. It's a lot longer than the uh, smaller flat rate. And these pretty much have gone, uh, they're just not used as much in my business. So the small flat rate envelope I used to use all the time. Now that ground advantage is around, it pretty much takes out most of those unless it goes to the far coast. And when that happens, this legal one still comes in handy. Pretty easy with shirts. If you have like a bunch of jeans, you're not going to be able to pull this off. But what I like to do is just kind of get them as straight as possible and sometimes I take off this plastic bag just because you know any little bit helps to get it in there but it also makes it slide in easier so sometimes it's okay to leave them but five shirts should be no problem it's gonna look something like this and I got this little almost like a sleeping bag type roll and tuck move I like to put it up to my stomach tuck it in and then when it's tucked grab like the middle of the flap here when you do that, you kind of roll the edges down. So that's going to be good enough. I've never had any complaints. People ask me all the time about it. Now, I do put one piece of tape across the seam here to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And there we go. And this is going to ship for $8.27. The way I set up my shipping station, pretty much just like daily refinements. If you watched my most recent live stream video, I kind of did the first live in here. It was a little difficult, you know, the sun, the lighting wasn't perfect, but um, once we get the blinds, we can control some of that. It's early morning right now. It's kind of gloomy outside. Anyway, the way I set this up though is I kind of copy daily refinements like I have with much of my business. And I decided to put all the shipping stuff here as far as the scale, the packages that we ship in, the tape. And then I have my two boxes of inventory. To the right, I have the label printer and the trash can for you know, the other side of the label. Now, one thing that I need to figure out 
maybe make it like a little bit better is gonna be this right here. So this is the shipment bags that I use from the post office. If you guys are nice to them and you ship a lot with them, they'll let you borrow one or two of these. And I got this little clip here and I like to put it at the edge of this table. There's a handle here and I just clip it on and then I have a bag that can receive the items after I put the label on it. Not too bad. This next item, I thought it would sell for more money. This is by the brand Huck. Now Huck is gonna be like a fishing brand. It's, it's, I pronounce it Huck, it's Hook, it's H-U-K. This one has what they call the Neptune Camo and it looks pretty sweet, but it only sold for $10.18 plus $8.99 shipping. So something like this, it's not a lot in the sale. It's only $4.47 to ship because it's under eight ounces. When you go under that eight ounce range, you get some of the lower discounts. If you're under four ounces, it's the cheapest for ground advantage. And then under eight, and then under 12, and then under uh, 16. So those are four different like payment scales. So you always wanna go you know, as light as possible. And you gotta kind of remember that when you're buying the items. If it's over a pound, there's a good chance you're gonna pay closer to like $8 for the shipping label. But sometimes, you know, depending on how close you are, sometimes it can be a lot cheaper. I'm not going to talk about every item in here just because not all of them are that good. You know, some of these are just old Ralph Lauren's that I picked up. I used to go super heavy on Ralph Lauren's because I was getting them for one, two, three dollars. Now, prices have gone up in thrift stores, so I can't really get some of these items for that cheap. And if you can't, sell something for more than $20, you really shouldn't be paying really more than five at the very most. And that's, it's a tough range to be in, you know, it's, it's very low profits. You got to be careful because if you pick something up at five or nowadays, like, you know, seven or nine and it has a stain or a flaw, it'll pretty much eat away all your profits. So you got to be a lot more careful, but a lot of these short sleeve polos are going to start selling now that the weather is warming up across the nation you know I'm still still buying like your typical athletic polos but I don't buy all of them so I don't buy a lot of the solid color ones I usually like it to be bigger sizes some type of pattern to it you know but I did see that there was uh, like Reebok polos that looked really nice but they were at Walmart for $18 brand new that was kind of a surprise I didn't know Walmart was you know having things like Reebok and stuff. I thought it was mainly, I don't know, like George and I know they had Wrangler and stuff, but I was pretty surprised to see that. And you know, that's, that's just kind of how it goes. You don't want to, you got to kind of know the retail market as well as the used market, just because you may run into a trap where you see a good brand, but then come to find out that brand is sold at Costco. One great example of this is Orvis. Orvis is a I think they're more known for outdoor fishing and they have a lot of nice looking clothes, but they ended up selling to, I think Costco where they start mass producing a lot. I don't know if it's lower end items. I think it is. And anyway, it's, it ends up being a lot less valuable than you'll see a lot more of it. I think another one was spider. That's S I think it's S P Y D E R. And spider was one of those brands that there's like some really expensive stuff, you know, for snowboarding and skiing and things like that. But I'm pretty sure a lot of their quarter zips and stuff and things like that are now sold much cheaper because I'm seeing more of them in the, in the thrift store. And I bought, I think two of them. And I think I only got like $20 for them, 20, $22 shipped, I think. And that's definitely not where you want to be when you expect to get a lot more, meaning you might accidentally pay too much for it. Luckily, I didn't pay that much for it, but um, that's definitely something you can run into with the brands that sell out to Costco and, and like those big box stores like that. Another couple things that are on my mind about being in this new office is obviously I need to make a little more money because, you know, I'm paying $600 a month, which, you know, that's that's pretty cheap for how much space that I have, but I have to utilize the space as best as possible, meaning I need to be here every day, which I have to ship every day. So, I mean, that brings me up to the office, but I actually need to be focused doing like listings while I'm here or, uh, you know, some of my other business or like editing YouTube videos, things like that. I can't just have this as like a place for, 
you know, Randy to do photos, I got to utilize it more. And I have noticed that when I am here, there's really no distractions. You know, when I'm at home, it seems like there's a lot of distractions, but here I can kind of just get on the computer and start working. And I really like that about this space. Here's one that I wish would have gone for more money. This is a Polo Ralph Lauren. It's an all over print with the uh, sailboats on it. And it only sold for $12.54 plus shipping. And it's going to New York. So not really sure why this one's not as in style. But a lot of times when it does go for less money like this, when it should go for more, it's usually because there's a stain or a flaw that I missed. And um, with white shirts, that's pretty common. I used to just stay away from white shirts all the time. It's kind of part of it. And I'm not really sad about you know not getting as much money. I just Some of those shirts, you feel like you can get a lot more money. And this one was just kind of so-so. Here is a Tommy Bahama. This is a short sleeve polo. Now, Tommy Bahama typically does better if it's like Island Zone or some of the newer styles or like the floral stuff. This one's just a gray one in XL. And this sold for $10.60 plus $8.99. So right at that $20 mark. And you're really trying to spend like $3 if you're going to sell something for $20 shipped. But... It's getting harder to find. I know Tommy Bahamas sometimes will be priced at twelve to sixteen dollars in my thrift stores. A Columbia PFG is another one that they price up, which they don't really hold their value like they used to. Um, I think either the people pricing them at the thrift stores just have this idea that those brands are like you know really nice and super expensive, when in reality they're not a uh, they're not that. They're not that great. But certain ones, you know, if it's, like I said, big and tall sizes are typically ones that you're going to want to kind of look for. There's also other categories in the thrift stores that I've been experimenting with. And that's mainly like shoes. And yeah, shoes and clothes are, they're closely similar, I guess. I mean, but they're not at the same time. I'm starting to have Randy take photos of shoes. But I think what I need to do when it comes to utilizing her as an employee is... I need to really have her do more of the listing. So I just have her do processing photos. She knows how to ship items, but she can't reach the top shelf when it comes to uh, pulling orders. And I don't want her walking on a like a step stool or anything like that, unless I got like maybe a heavy duty one. Pause on that though. This is a Toscano. So this is a sh silk short sleeve button shirt in black. And this one sold for $11.16 plus $8.99 shipping. So Toscano is a brand that a lot of people overlook because it's not like the best brand, but I've sold this plenty of times. I'm really bullish when it comes to picking up black uh, clothing items, probably because I wear a lot of black uh, clothes, but I feel like it's a safe bet for a lot of men out there that don't really care about their wardrobe a whole lot. They'll just be comfortable wearing black or gray. But this type of shirt is one you can definitely find on like half off day. Toscana. And it's going to make you some money. But back to like having Randy do more listings. So the problem with having somebody do listings is the pricing. And the reason I say that is because she doesn't know the value of all the items that we sell. And the only way to really know the values is to be in this long enough looking at the solds and also the amount of shipping you do. So, And even if you do a lot of shipping and you see a lot of the prices, like kind of the average, okay, it looks like this always sells for this. There's so much nuance in this business that passing off that task is extremely difficult to do is what I've found. It's really hard to get somebody to source for you. A lot of people think that they can do it, but in reality, they don't truly understand the brands or the sell through rate or the profit margins. And then they end up buying a bunch of stuff that doesn't sell or isn't selling for what they have it listed for. And then they wonder why like their business isn't working. And, it, and a lot of it's just because they don't, they don't truly understand. Here's an interesting one. This is Under Armour. It's an athletic short and it's a pair of athletic shorts. It's a 3XL. It sold for $12.21. I used to buy a lot of athletic shorts, but I kept finding out that the elastic would be messed up, the drawstrings would be missing, um, there'd be some type of stain on it, you know. So I kind of got away from it, but I got to remember that when I was doing that, I was selling a lot. So I need to probably go back to some of those areas. I got really comfortable in just the button-ups, the polos, uh, the jeans. 
I got really comfortable in those three categories and I think it's worth hitting up the entire store. And I have been going through the athletic shorts a little more to find, you know, the bigger sizes, the brands that, you know, have been proven to make about 20 bucks. And this one here, this is Peter Millar. This is actually a floral chino short. I definitely could have got more money for this. It sold for 13 plus 8.99. Somebody, I think, uh, got it, got that on a discount, or maybe they sent an offer, possibly. But I had it listed at twenty plus shipping, and then I took the thirteen. But yeah, I've been finding like Roan, uh, Lululemon in the athletic short section. I found, um, you know, a couple other ones that are pretty good. And yeah, it's you know, it's a good category to be in, especially with the spring summer coming around. You just have to look at them a little more closely. And also because it's spring summer, the thrift stores are pricing their chino shorts and their athletic clothes really high because that's the season that they're in. And you would think they would price their jeans lower, but the jeans are pretty much at uh, kind of a standard price, at least at the thrift stores that I go to. Here's a Banana Republic piece. Banana Republic piece. That's kind of a tongue twister. This is 100% linen. This was a long sleeve button shirt, and I put blue plaid. It's actually more of a purplish blue. Ah, man. I wonder if that's going to be purple and they're going to get mad about that. I don't know. It looks it looks blue in the pictures, but in person it looks more purple. This one sold for $14.70 plus shipping. So, uh, Banana Republic, not a great brand. Anything 100% linen, even in brands that aren't that good, it, it can sell, especially during this time of year, just because people desire that material. Here is a combined order. This one went for 39, $39.61 all in, and it's two Ralph Lauren shirts. These are both short sleeve button shirts. One is a, uh, it's almost like that Christmas plaid, red, green, white, and then the other one is just <laughs> plain, plain yellow, so... You got the two here, and it was right at one pound when I put it on the scale. So what I do in that situation is I take both clear bags out because I need to put like an actual shipping mailer on it. And with this weight taken out of it, and then the shipping mailer like, you know, added back, hopefully it's still right at a pound or hopefully like a 0.1 ounce lower. And then the, without a doubt, you know, you won't get hit with an overage at the shipping at the post office which you won't see that right away especially if you drop it off there's no way but sometimes you'll get emails saying you paid too much or you paid too little and yeah it's at 15.8 ounces so we definitely trimmed some of the fat there got it under one pound to get our most uh most profit out of this sale and that's a pretty good one and, and combined orders can be great six dollars nine cents to ship it out it's going to illinois or Illinois. I don't know if it's Illinois or Illinois. Although I was born in Illinois. And that's no, that's not why I'm a Chicago Bears fan. That's just uh that's just where my dad was, you know, stationed whenever he had me. And speaking of the Bears, I decided against going to the NFL draft. I was definitely gonna go to the NFL draft, but my brother's going to Florida and he's gonna be with some friends and he invited me to go out there, so I'm going to go ahead and use that as like my trip and I don't I think I'm just going to like hang out with my dad and grandpa and watch the draft with them and we'll do like you know food and beers and stuff like that. So I think that'll be more fun than actually going because you know I value time with my dad and grandpa especially around football that's that's pretty much what uh you know all three of us like our favorite thing to do is to watch football. So I'm going to go do that but yeah we're going to go to Florida I'm going to go to Florida. My parents, or my parents, my parents aren't going, but my wife and son, they're going to stay here. My wife used up all her days. So she's going to stay, hold down the fort, take care of Ragnar, my son, and I'm going to go in April. So it's actually going to be WrestleMania weekend. That's the weekend that uh, I'm going to be down in Florida. So if you guys are in the uh, Pensacola, what is it? Is it Pensacola? I don't know if it's Pensacola. I think it's like uh, like Fort Walton Beach, Destin area, Pensacola. It's somewhere in that strip because it goes Panama City, um, Destin, Fort Walton Beach, I think Navarre and Pensacola. It's somewhere in that strip, like that 
that area of Florida, that's where we're going to be at. I don't have all the details, but the one day that I go there, I'm going to make it like a thrifting day, a vlog day, because my brother and his friends are doing something, and then, you know, the rest of the weekend, I'm going to hang out with them. So I'm going to have like a day to myself, focus on like business stuff, and then, um, I don't know. So if you guys are in that area and maybe y'all want to meet up or something or uh, grab a bite to eat or something, I should be in that area. And I'll put some more details as we get closer. But yeah, if you guys are around that area and you want to hang out, you know, I'm going to bring some bring some Texas to Florida. I love that area, by the way. It's, it's a very cool area. And I'm excited for it, man. My brother, I haven't seen him in a few years. You know, we talk when we can and we do like the phone chats what is it not skype but like you know video chat i guess the facebook messenger so yeah it should be pretty dope i'm i'm excited about it i'm gonna i love i love wrestling too i haven't been watching it lately because it's kind of like a trap once you start watching it, i feel like i watch it like a couple months and then i consume so much of it and then i get bored of like the whole back and forth and the stories and stuff but every once in a while, I like to dip my toes back into some some WWE, you know? It's definitely, it was a big impact on my childhood. Childhood, for sure. And then I found out it was fake, you know? And you know how, like, we I really found out it was fake? They came to my city, and a bunch of my friends went, and I didn't go. But they were like, yeah, it's completely fake. And they're like, in person, you can obviously see it. And I was, I was kind of a... <laughs> I was I was extremely saddened, you know, because I didn't want that to be the case, but uh, that definitely was. So it's almost like the whole Santa Claus thing too. You know, you find out about all those things. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I skipped over a couple. That was a Travis Matthew long sleeve button shirt went for 23 plus shipping, and then we have a 511 tactical short sleeve shirt. Now this one is the snap one, and it sold for 1804 plus shipping. I'm still buying these quite often. Like some people have moved off of them, but I'm still picking up the snap ones. If it's heavier weight for the 511s, it's gonna be more money. Yeah, 511 Tactical. It's the same like cargo pants that I wear all the time. It's a great brand. I need to buy some more actually. And I was thinking of going to eBay uh, to buy some because I never find them in my size at the thrift stores. I've only found three ever of the style that I like. And I definitely need to buy another, buy another couple. Let's see. Yeah, I just started I started zooming through some of these without telling you. Let's see. Another combined order just came in, but I'm not going to pull any more items. I actually got to help my mother-in-law move. So I'm going to go get a U-Haul, kind of like I did for this uh, move here. Those U-Hauls are super cheap. It's 40 bucks a day, and it's a dollar a mile. So that's extremely cheap, and we are going to help them move. So I'm actually going to have Randy help. She's coming at 9, which is going to be in uh, 22 minutes and the whole deal with that is anytime you have more hands helping move it just makes things a lot easier so we're gonna get the truck we're gonna help them move and then I have to shoot a product review video for like this giant uh, canopy type thing and I need like a few people just to help me assemble it okay so I'm gonna try to use <laughs> use my brother-in-law and uh, maybe my mother-in-law and just try to get them to help me set this thing up and record it and then I got to make a video about it and once that's done we're going to come back here me and Randy and I don't have any items for her to do other than probably 20 pairs of shoes so she may list the shoes but I may actually work on the uh, inventory there's like a little correction I have to make whenever we put the boxes back on the racks because of the way we loaded the truck to make the move, which I'm going to explain it in the next video. But anyway, things are a little out of order. So it's kind of driving my OCD a little nuts. And that just needs to be corrected. But yeah, so I may have her help me with that inventory. I may take her to the thrift store. Sometimes I like taking Randy with me just because I do. I would like to teach her eventually how to like thrift items and pick up the right stuff. But honestly... It's getting extremely difficult with how expensive it is. And then also, it's just it's a hard thing to do when the margins are so tight. If you spend $3 more than you need to, it can make a big difference. And then people are like, well, just buy the better items. Like, don't buy such 
cheap items, but it's like if you don't have better items in front of you, like if you're not the first to the rack, I don't see how anybody is getting like that good of items if you're not getting fresh inventory. Um, I can still kind of find stuff off the racks. Uh, for example, yesterday I went sourcing and I found a Mercedes-Benz licensed polo with the Mercedes-Benz logo. That was just on a regular rack. And it was $5, but you know a lot of people don't really know that that's a good one. And I haven't really looked up comps for it, but I'm almost 100% sure it's a $25 to $30 shirt. Because um, I, I, I've never seen them. Like, I mean, I've seen like BMWs. Um, polos and stuff, but yeah, those types of brands like the luxury cars, if you find those licensed polos, they're gonna be good for sure. So, I actually might look that up and find out. This is just a Brooks Brothers, a lot of Brooks Brothers for me sells for like $18, that's including shipping. So, again, you're right at that like three dollar mark, you know, four at the most, but sometimes those shirts can go for a little more money. But a lot of times they're going for like 19 bucks. We've got another couple here. I'm trying to save the best one for last. This is going to be an RLX short sleeve polo. It's orange striped. It's a size small, but the tag was actually ripped out. No, it's actually an extra small. So the way that works is if the tag is missing, the pit to pit, which is this measurement from here to here, basically that determines the size. Now, it can be tricky because if you don't know, you'd have to look at the catalog or like the chart, the size chart, because different brands are sometimes slightly different. But typically, if you have like a 20 pit to pit, it's gonna be a size small, like 20 to 21. And then if you have like a 21 to 22 or even, even I don't know, 23 maybe, those are gonna be like your mediums and then 23, 24 is like your large and so on and so forth. But some brands run smaller, and that, that can be a little bit of a problem. But that's how I decide, you know, is this an extra small? I think it was like an 18 pit to pit. So that's definitely an extra small. Worst case scenario, it's like a youth really big size, but I don't think that's the case. But yeah, usually I try to avoid buying stuff if it doesn't have the tag size, just because you can run into more problems when it comes to stuff like that. This is just a Tommy Bahama, super old SKU. This is less than 10000 on the SKUs, meaning it was listed a long time ago. And it's still sold for like $16 shipped, but uh, just a plain blue one. All right, last two items are pretty good, though, that we got here. This one is Public Rec. Public Rec all-day shorts. Um, they have elastic waist. The sizing was a little off. It's a size 38, 30, but the waist was a 35, and then the inseam was a 28. So definitely not true to size, which can be a big problem. Kind of deters a lot of people from buying it. Um, and it looks like this one is going to Portland, Oregon. So what we do with that is it's over a pound, and it's going to be $8.52. So that means we're going to hit the priority flat rate. So for $7.99, you can use the priority flat rate. We showed it earlier in the video, but it's going to be the smaller one. So this is going to save us 53 cents. And when people say like, oh, I'll just use a bubble mailer, you know, a padded flat rate bubble mailer, that padded flat rate is going to be 874. So that means you're, you're pretty much losing um, 73 cents if, or no, 75 cents if you use the padded one. And then this one, you know, we're, we're saving 53 cents. So if you were walking and you saw two quarters or three quarters on the ground, if you're one of those that wouldn't bend down to pick it up, ship however you want. You know, Use the padded flat rate envelope. But if you're going to bend down and pick up 75 cents or 50 cents, then it would make sense for you to ship the cheapest possible so that you could uh, make the most money. Because that stuff adds up. I mean, because I like you know took away some of the... Uh, clear bags to like get under that. I saved probably a dollar on that one shipment, save 53 cents here. That's a dollar 50. Then another, you know, maybe I had one more today. I'm not really sure. I'd have to look at the footage, but yeah, if you're saving two dollars a day because you're just taking 15 seconds to change the way you pack something, like th that is worth doing, in my opinion. But with shirts like this, it doesn't matter. This is an Indian motorcycle, so Indian. It's the Bomber Track Jacket, and I got this from a local friend of mine now, and this is actually a huge, huge score. This one sold for $99 plus shipping, so I definitely owe him one, and 
Yeah, I think of Indian motorcycles. You think of, uh, what is it, American Pickers. It's Mike and Frank. Mike's that guy that's always like kind of cracked out, and he's always like, oh, like, look at this rusty gold, you know, or whatever. And he's always talking about motorcycles and bicycles. Well, motor Indian motorcycles, that's definitely where I've heard of that. And this was a crazy good sale. Looks like we're going to go ground advantage. So I'm going to put it in one of the bigger poly bags. You guys didn't know I use gyro pack poly mailers. I got Taylor 10 discount code in the description. You can get a discount. Those are the bags I use. That's the 14 and a half by 19. It can pretty much hold everything that I need. Uh, these bigger items, it goes for shoes as well. But yeah, 100 bucks on this one. Really great score. Definitely the best sale of the day. And we're going to pack this up and be done with shipping. So now I'm pretty much going to get on the computer, maybe do some listings, probably edit that video a little bit, or watch Blade Runner on Hulu. I've been watching some of that, the new one. And, uh, well, new. It's from like 2018 or something like that, but I haven't seen it, and it's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and do that and wait until Randy comes, then we're going to go get that U-Haul and help my mom uh my mother-in-law move her move her stuff so yeah that's gonna be it's gonna be a fun day you know it's it's kind of gloomy though we had flash floods yesterday so that's hopefully it's not too like nasty and wet where we're going but you know we'll just have to see yeah overall it's been a pretty good day pretty good week pretty good move i've been here for about a week and a half now and i'm just i'm really enjoying the space it was definitely worth the extra money that i'm paying per month because uh it just it feels right. I feel like the business is moving in the right directions, and I'm going to continue kind of bringing you guys some um, updates on how things are going in my life and my business, and hopefully you guys can you know apply some of these uh, concepts and things to your business and your life, and, and yeah, we can get on and, and have a good time. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I appreciate you watching. Bye.